Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to round 26 for Pure Speed Elite Series here at Daytona International Speedway. The pinnacle of stock car racing, Daytona is known for the exciting action, fast speeds, and those notorious big ones. But adding that it's the last race before the playoffs, tonight could really shake things up in the final spots for the 16 that move on. Who will win tonight's race and who will move on in the final 16? Stay tuned to find out as I'm here with Jordan McGraw, bringing you all the action from the booth. Jordan, what's up tonight? How are you? I am great. Uh, had just excited for some plate racing. Uh, this is going to be a real exciting night. The final race of the regular season. It's going <laughs> to be crazy. It's going to be wild. These drivers are going to be really aggressive. Uh, hopefully from the get go, or maybe hopefully not from the get go. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to gauge that one <laughs> as we as we go. But uh, really excited to see how this race shakes out for the PSES drivers. Absolutely. Tooted, thank you so much for, for the months. gifted sub. You guys are awesome. Mr. Met, what's up? I had to say hello to you guys, but Jordan is right. We're going to see, I think we're going to see a whole lot of different type of racing tonight. We're going to see some single file. We're going to see two and three wide. We're going to see some cautions and we're going to see the big one. It just comes with the territory. We're under the lights here. So a lot of cool things going on tonight. You can see there's a lot of drivers out here. And uh, I, I got to bring up a huge thing here. Take a look at the points. We're going to take a break for a second. And we have uh, Matt O'Brien. He is now leader in the points over Wisdom by one point. Just one point separates our leader. And we have a kind of a change in events. Uh, Sammy Harrell, he will not be able to participate. So he is not going to move on in the final 16. That is going to move up uh, Sean Burke, Mark Johnson, and I believe Joel Conley, because there's a couple others uh, that will not be able to move on and have relinquished their spots. We'll have to confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be happening. So those three drivers will be moving on to the final 16 if they can make it through tonight. And it's going to be a wild race. But look at all these guys so far that are out there. We have Matt O'Brien in that number 17. We have uh, Hunter Johnson, Andrew Wisdom, Jamie Haynes, Charlie Mosley Jr. Junior. Jordan, it's a stacked field tonight. It's a stacked field every night here over in PSES, but definitely tonight it's going to be an absolute barn burner of a race uh, with all the drivers in here. And again, what's online? The, the regular season championship is online with Andrew Wisdom back out in the field. Uh, and here at, at Daytona, so much is going to be out of their hands uh, with where they finish. It's it's just going to be a, there are going to be a lot of stories, a lot of threads to follow as this race goes along. Absolutely. You can see we have David Hauk out there, Mike Everidge, Jason Keffer, Adam Rowe, Jorge Rincon. Uh, we have Atlanta Racing, Andrew Wisdom, Hunter Johnson. All these guys are out on track right now, going for the quickest time that they can possibly get on this track. And for you guys out in chat, thank you so much for tuning in. I have been MIA this week, so it's great to be back tonight. Great to have you guys back. And uh, I know the drivers definitely love the support, so thank you so much. And Tudid says, row for the dub. All right. We got Jamon saying Keffer in the house. Absolutely. He is most definitely out there. We're on board with him right now. Uh, he's missing numbers. You hate to see it. I hate that when that happens, but hopefully we'll get that fixed up for him. Uh, but he's looking really good out there. We have Andrew Wisdom. He has come to a stop for his lap. We have Hauk. Number one on the board right now, Mike Everidge in second, Jamie Haynes in third. And I want to go ahead and switch this view over here. Uh, we have Hunter Johnson in fifth with Andrew Wisdom in fourth. Let's see a, a, a little bit of movement around here. So really kind of crazy to see. We'll see what the top 10 brings, but these guys are still out. We still have about six minutes left in qualifying. So a lot of time left here for these guys. Yeah, a lot of time left. Still, yeah, we're not, we're not even halfway through. Still five and a half minutes left in this qualifying session, but 13 drivers Auto have put at least one lap time down uh, so far of the 32 that are currently signed up for this race. So a large field tonight, and you can expect that for uh, Daytona, Daytona, Talladega, the bigger tracks. 
tend to bring out a lot of drivers. And last week for Michigan, we had a very large field. So again, not surprising to see the number of cars. Uh, another thing not surprising is that we still have half the field to, to make a lap. Uh, temperature should be cooling down a little bit as we get deeper into the nighttime here at Virtual Daytona International Speedway, as well as a lot of drivers who are opting to uh, start in the back uh, strategy-wise to try to stay out of trouble, hold on to uh, uh, their fast repair that they have, and that's going to be the goal for them tonight is to keep the nose clean and keep out of the big wrecks. Yeah, you know, I have a feeling that a lot of guys will be using their fast repair tonight. So we'll see who that, uh, who is going to have to use, yeah, <laughs> who's going to have to use that. And is there going to be anyone that can survive tonight without having to use it? Uh, my take is going to be a no on that one, but we'll see. And I have to give a huge shout out to Savage, who did his first sub in the channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. He says, subscribe for five months. He said, um, I've been trying to sub, so I've been, a I just was able to do it. So happy that you're on your five month streak here. And it's been a while. I know from what you said, so glad you're able to do it. I appreciate it. And rock. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Mr. Met. Um, Man, I, I'm not 100%, I can tell you, so my brain is a little foggy tonight, but I'm excited to be here. This is one of these tracks where uh, being in the booth is a lot of fun, and I think being on the track will be fun, so uh, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a lot of action tonight, and uh, I want to see the big one, J-Mac. I don't know if I want to see the big one, but we're definitely <laughs> going to see the big one. <laughs> uh, luckily, none of these drivers are in danger, so, you know, watching the car flip over the over the uh, the the catch fence might be entertaining for us and for the for the fans back home but speaking of entertainment and speaking of of close actually i don't think anyone mentioned anything about close but i'm gonna say something about close uh jamie haynes in third qualified with a 689 meanwhile jason keffer in eighth qualified with a 695 so six drivers separated by six thousandths of a second it's pretty Hi. crazy I don't think you can get any closer than that. Let's take a look at the board oh, we there. Have a new pole yeah, we do have a new pole sitter, which is exactly what I was just about to say. Let's see if we can get this fixed here. I don't know why it's overlapping, but we have Joel Conley out on pole tonight so far. I don't want to jinx him, knock on some wood there, but David Hawkins second, Mike Everidge in third, Jamie Haynes in fourth, Andrew Wisdom, who was our points leader until O'Brien took that over by one point. He's going to round out the top five. And Ken says, Enrique, push it, man. Yeah, he's he's awesome. All these guys are awesome out here. Let's go on board with Enrique in that number 45 machine with Cold Dog Racing. This guy is awesome out here. In the top 10 for qualifying, the times are just so incredibly close. You saw uh, Jordan say it. We have Wisdom, Johnson, O'Brien, Mons, Keffer, all with a .69. Incredibly close. I mean, you can't get any closer than that. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. I'm obviously going to have to check the tape because there's definitely something different that our first three drivers did that's a little bit different to how they approach their qualifying lap. Maybe uh, we're able to stick a little higher to the wall, uh, went for, you know, different strategy because there's a, a hundredth of a second between each of them. And then it's a, it's, you know, about 15 thousandths, a hundred and a half to fourth place, Jamie Haynes. But then, yeah, everyone from there on back is insanely tight until about 14th place. So, uh, these times really, really close, but that's kind of what you expect here at Daytona, where it's just flat out. Yeah, you, you push the pedal to the floor and and try to hold the wheel as straight as you can. We have Joel Kool Aid Conley with us. It's Eliza. How are you doing, Joel, tonight? Oh yeah, what's up, guys? <laughs> you oh, are yeah. on pole, man. That's so exciting. Glad to see you out here tonight at Daytona. Uh, so, what's your strategy going into tonight? Um not crash and just try to have fun and not get mad that that's my only goal absolutely I, I can respect that and understand that for sure but uh blistering lap out there you did an amazing job so i i just want to wish you uh no booth curse tonight and a lot of luck out there well i'll take the booth curse i already expect correct so uh, <laughs> i appreciate you guys see you over there j mac what's up brother howdy howdy 
So, yeah, I'm going to go crash. It's going to be a fun time. <laughs> All right, let's get it done. And hopefully I will see you in the booth afterwards, sir. Maybe not the crashing unless you're going to end up on your roof, in which case crash away. Yeah. Well, I will make it big for the stream. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joel, you take it easy and good luck tonight. Thanks, guys. See you. All right. All right, you heard it from Joel. I mean, he's ready for tonight. He's prepared for that wreck that might happen. And you, let, let's be honest, we know it's going to happen. It's just how it goes. These guys are getting ready to uh, line up for the grid here. So 80 laps tonight is going to be absolutely insane. I'm excited. Let's get these guys lined up. We have uh, Joel Conley. He's going to be on pole in that number 62 machine with David Hauk on the outside in that number 21. In row two, we have Thomas Harmon in that number 68 with Mike Everidge in the 19 on the outside. Row three, we have Jamie Haynes in the 53 with Andrew Wisdom in the 29. Row four, we have Hunter Johnson in the 32 with Matt O'Brien in the 17. And uh, row five, we have Justin Mons in the 41 with Jason Keffer in the 33. In row uh, not 11, row six, <laughs> we have Enrique Quinones in the 45 in 11th place. Uh, fifth, in the 15 is Adam Rowe. Uh, behind them is Jorge Rincon in the 28 with Sean Burke in the 223. Mike Bain and Doc Holliday are alongside each other in row eight. Douglas King in the 9 is in 17th. Robert Reynolds in the 10 is in 18th. And in row 10, Cole Snyder and Charles Mosley. In row 11, we have John Honeycutt in that number 50 machine with Atlanta Racing on the outside, who's joining us tonight in that number 44. And the next row, we have Chris Fafke in the 27 with Austin Collins in the double zero on the outside. In row 12, we have Tom Flitcroft in the number 8 with Edward Schur on the outside in that 18. In the next row, we have Jacob Kerr in the 20 car with Jose Ruiz on the outside in that number 30. Uh, in 29th, we have Bud Shear in the 93 with Steve Waldrop in the number 6. And in the final row, we have Michael York in the number 5 with Brian Smith in the 78 and uh jordan you know talking to some of these guys i feel like uh definitely some strategy calls to you know not qualify and stay in the back here yeah eight drivers opting not to put down a qualifying time actually nine drivers uh opting not to put a qualifying time down uh 23 did so so I believe those nine obviously attempting to to stay in the back thomas flipcroft edward Shearer, sure Sure, sure. Uh, Jake <laughs> Kerr, Jose Ruiz, Bud Shear, Steve Waldrop, Michael York, Brian Smith. Though all those guys you would fully expect to hang around the back, or maybe they're just trying to have fun and they're going to blast through the field here, which uh, would be a very interesting strategy decision unless they were incredibly confident of their ability to get to the front, which, hey, who knows? They could be. You know what? I was speaking to uh, Team FTR there, and Michael York said, you know what? I'm staying in the back. Uh, you know, I'm just going to hang back for a while and I'll, I'll see you guys in the final five laps up at the front. I'm staying in the back. That's my strategy, trying to keep it clean, let the chaos happen in front of me. And I feel like, the, you know, that's what a lot of guys are uh, feeling like right now. So we'll see how that plays out. A good strategy for them. Uh, if it's me, I'm, I'm always one. I want to be in the front. I want to stay out the front. I don't want any. I want all the guys behind me. I want to be right out front. <laughs> yeah, this is a. These are the kind of tracks that is well noted amongst our circles that these kind of places bring out the aggressive side of me. And I agree. I want to be out front uh, leading all the laps that I can, controlling the race and uh, and most importantly, having fun and being aggressive. So here we go. They're going green. Here we go. Green at Daytona International Speedway. Joel Conley in the 62 leading us off. We have the 68 directly behind him. That is Thomas Harmon. He is all over him. The 21 who is a new driver tonight. David Hauk. He is leading the outside, but quickly already, Jordan. He is falling back. Yeah, falling back a little bit. That inside lane is going to be where you want to be, especially at the start of these restarts when you're trying to get up to speed. Uh, the outside lane not going to be very good at all until these drivers are able to get wound up, get some momentum going. But uh, a lot of drivers in, in some Pepsi cars, I think that must be a, a team thing. But yeah, 
They're th two two of the top three cars uh, looking very, very similar. Going to be a little hard for us to spot, but luckily one of them has the bright yellow numbers. That's Joel Conley, our leader. The other driver, the 68 of Thomas Harmon, they're in third, but already about the top 10 and even more already single file as they head down to the turn one. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Man, you got to love the engines. Oh, these things are crazy. We're gonna go in view and take a look at how close these drivers are. You do, if you are uh, if you are not the second place person who is pushing the guy in front of you, you have to leave a little bit of a gap. You will wreck and uh, get that guy loose directly in front of you. So these guys will be leaving some space. I'm expecting some single file racing uh, just for a little bit out here. These guys wanna kind of get the feel for how they're racing in, around everyone, how the car feels behind in drive how it feels out front so right now these guys are just trying to feel out their car and see what it can do and what it can handle yeah and most importantly they're all just trying to keep it clean and and out of danger as they're all basically getting to a single file line you do not want to be one of those three drivers stuck in that outside lane in the middle of the pack literally everyone else wrapping the yellow line around this two and a half mile raceway in beautiful scenic daytona beach florida as uh it, it looks like a pretty night out there i don't i don't know if uh, if it is one but i'm just gonna assume <laughs> it's a nice uh, beautiful not humid at all night as these drivers are gonna log some laps here like you said try to get the feeling of these race cars try to get a few laps under their belt and then uh we'll see how long it takes for the aggression to 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 pick up but you can already tell the drivers that want to stay in the back because there's a group of four already well off the off of that main pack yeah you know i saw these guys on the high side and if i am not uh mike everidge he started pretty well out front jordan and he has since fallen back if i'm not mistaken I, i'm pretty sure i saw him out front on the high side and he just had nowhere to go tried to make it work and yet he's back here. That's just how it's gonna go tonight. Uh, so these guys in a single file line right now, that's not gonna last for long though. Yeah, started fourth, now currently in 24th. Might be in a different place <laughs> at the line, uh, depending on my scoring. Uh, but yeah, Michael Everidge, real unfortunate there as, uh, as everybody in a single file line here in the feeling it out stage of our race here at Daytona Speedway tonight. Let's take a look out front, see how these guys are doing out here. Joel Conley still leading the field, uh, doing an incredible job. Man, oh man, absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at this camera view on the back stretch. That is a train, you guys, absolutely insane. And uh, as Jordan says, f a group of four guys just back there and uh, a lot of smoke going on. Let's see if we can find out anything that has happened. But Steve Waldrop has jumped to the pits. Not sure what has happened to him. Let's take a look here. Yeah, we don't even. <laughs> it doesn't even show anything. So uh, I don't know if he uh, had a engine troubles or what, but it looks like he possibly might be out. Yeah, he was a little off the pace, but yeah, he got down <laughs> trying to get the pit road and locked him up. But yeah, not at all sure what happened to him. Ken and Nimcross, thank you for the follow, you guys. I really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the race tonight. These guys are having a heck of a race uh, right now. Single file. These guys are playing it safe. Uh, but like I said, I don't think it's going to last like that forever. That is a long train, though. We have, let's take a look. We have 31 drivers out here. Brian Smith is going to be in, uh, it looks like he might be out too, Jordan. Yeah, th those two, I don't think, made the uh, the grid to start the race. I believe, uh, I believe uh, neither Steve Waldrop nor Brian Smith uh, started this race. I think Waldrop might have been a little late, maybe uh, had some connection issues at the very start or something. Pulled out of the pit road, made one lap, and then called her a day and pulled her back into the garage. Joel Conley still very comfortable out front. He's got uh, Thomas Harmon directly behind him in that number 68. And you guys, I, I love the frozen car. I said it to Jordan earlier. Look at that frozen car. I, I don't care uh, that it's just for Elsa, to, you know, for frozen. <laughs> I'll take it since I'm frozen on Xbox. <laughs> You gotta love it. Jamie Haynes in third. We have Andrew Wisdom. 
He uh, was in the points lead forever, Jordan. Like I said, has since fallen to second. He is back after a suspension, which actually made him lose uh, the lead here. But uh, he's looking to regain that as this is the last race of the playoffs and hopes that he can take the points into the playoffs for leading in points. Yeah, and speaking of losing, Hunter Johnson opted to pop out of line there, went to the back of this front pack, which is made up of, I believe, 12 drivers. So he will fall all the way back to 12th after running around in fourth for uh, much of this first run here. Just trying to get to the back of the pack, I guess. I don't know, doesn't want to be uh, riding in the middle of that line. And honestly, I, I kind of sympathize with that point. It's real, real tough to just kind of sit there and ride in line and, uh, and, and you have, it's real stressful too. <laughs> like you think, oh, I'm just driving along, but you have to keep a lot of tabs on that driver behind you. You have to make sure you're not getting too big of a run to put that driver in front of you in a bad position. And uh, it's just, it's just not a whole lot of fun riding in line at this place. But oh, speaking of which, Hunter Johnson, he had popped to the outside again, that middle pack caught them to make a big old pack. And he popped down in line to make sure he didn't get hung out to dry and fall all the way back to the 30th position. Yeah, we're on board with him right now. So I'm making that move. You can just see uh, he's one of those drivers. He's a go getter. He's not going to stay in line. He told me before the race, I'm going to oh, go to the outside. So some, some action up front here. Uh, I the, see that. The, the teammates, uh, the 41 of Justin Mons and the 33 of Jason Keffer, they each popped out there to try to see if they could make up a position. And I believe they might have been successful there. Not 100% sure. Let me adjust my camera so I can see a little better. No, they were not. But still, yeah, they were. Yeah. Justin Mons was actually able to move up into that third position. Keffer up to fifth. So those two working on a little bit of a plan, trying to figure out how to make some moves. And meanwhile, behind them, Hunter Johnson, it looks like, has popped out as well but not thinking that's gonna work as Justin Mons pops out, tries to get that second position. Let's take a look at this battle up front. Andrew Wisdom side by side. Uh, the 41 is gonna fall back. It's just so tough out here. You need so much help to make that outside work. And he's got his teammate of Jason Keffer directly behind him, but just the two of them, it's not gonna work. They're gonna have to find a way to get back in line and try it again with more cars. Here is where communication is key. Uh, before the race, we had a lot of guys talking with other teams. Hey, do you guys want to hook up tonight? Do you want to help each other? Make it through the crowd, and uh, we'll try to work together and make it happen tonight. Somebody's going to go for the win. So uh, a lot of communication between teams and teammates trying to make something happen tonight for strategy. Yeah, that, the, the 41 and the 33 got a little impatient. They were able to make a nice move the, the previous uh, two laps ago, but then on the previous lap, they tried that same move, not able to get clear of that driver was the 41. And nobody let him in, and, and honestly, it didn't look like he was going to be too aggressive trying to get down, uh, going to fall all the way to the back of his pack, and, and this is looking like this is going to be what we see until this first set of green flag pit stops. So honestly, if, going to be in the pack you might as well be toward the very back of it so you can save some fuel maybe go a little longer maybe have a little bit shorter of a pit stop whenever you you decide to come in because i'm sure these drivers are not going to be taking a lot of tires maybe doing what we like what i know i like to do what we've done on nascar heat for years what we what has worked on here as well is just alternating which side you want to take tires shorten up that pit stop probably try to make it where you take your rights with that final stop which not sure how the math would work out but i assume you'd probably want to take rights uh with your it probably lefts with your first stop and then rights with that second one assuming it goes green all the way which i don't think either of us believes will happen Matt O'Brien in that number 17, who is currently the points leader. He is sitting uh, in 12th right now. Uh, so we'll see how he can make his way up through the field. He's really trying to keep the points lead, but we'll see if he can keep that tonight. It's just one of those things. It's a toss up. A lot of luck tonight that you need to make it happen here at Daytona. So very, very special race by itself. But you add that it's the last race in the regular point season. I mean, this is absolutely Absolutely incredible. A lot of, uh, you know, anxiousness going into tonight for some of these drivers. 
They're asking me, what what do you feel like tonight's gonna be? Is it gonna be a lot of cautions? Uh, is there gonna be double file racing? I said, you know, I, I really think we're gonna see it all. We're gonna see double wide, we're gonna see three wide, we're gonna see single file, and we're gonna see the big one. It's just how it is. But these guys are minding their P's and Q's right now. Uh, we're on lap 14 of 80, so a ton of racing left. But uh, things are bound to get a little crazy later on. Yeah, and speaking of uh, of crazy, uh, David Hawk, our, uh, our Hawk, uh, our second place starter outside of the front row, he has uh, disconnected. Uh, he's lagged out and had some electrical issues, virtual electrical issues, as we like to say. And he is currently one lap down, about to be two laps down here, as uh, he is currently off the racetrack. Man, really unfortunate to see. Uh... I gotta take give a you know a shout out to HSU goes in. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. But you hate to see it when people lag out or disconnect or engine troubles, whatever you want to call it here on the virtual racetrack. You hate to see it. But these guys are still single file. Absolutely crazy. And you can just see the amount of space that they are leaving. Uh, in between each other. You just have to be able to do that and be patient. And these guys are really showing how patient they can be. We're on board with Enrique right now in that number 45. And uh, he is just being very patient. And take a look at the back bumper of Andrew Wisdom in that nine car. He says, BRB, on my way to wreck O'Brien. <laughs> These two are in the battle for the points lead. And I, I know uh, wisdom, and it's obviously a joke, but uh, nice bumper there. <laughs> Is it, though? Is it a joke? <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> we'll find out tonight, huh? Yeah, 24 drivers currently in this long line in the main pack. Uh, John Honeycutt lost the draft a little bit ago. He is falling back. He will be with Jose Ruiz, Michael York, and uh, and Bud Shearer. Those four uh, are now uh, working together, drafting, and in a really safe spot. I don't think that's exactly where they want to be, but uh, I think uh, that's going to be the safest position. I'm, there's no way we go green all the way. That This race is going to get interesting whenever we get to these green flag stops because that's when we'll see everything kind of break up and you can look in the back the the 41 and the 33 continuing to try to mix it up try to do something to see if they can make any ground up through the field practicing some moves and and uh and i i like that i like that they're working on on making moves for the end of the oh! race oh there's a wreck in the back the 20 car of uh jacob kerr he has spun around that is going to bring out the caution. Not quite sure what brought that on. We'll take a look here, though. See if we can find out big, what happened. Big checkup in front of him. Everything kind of accordion together. He got almost to the bumper of the 8, and the 32 wasn't really able to uh, to, to get checked up. It just a big accordion effect and kind of got double tapped. The 32 looked like he was doing everything he could to get off of him and, and not hook him, but it just it just eventually turned him around there and obviously the eight the 20 were two drivers that were adamant about waiting around till the end of the race to try to save their faster pair try to save their race car uh this is n completely against the 20s plan being involved in this wreck yeah absolutely and uh interesting enough those three were all ftr drivers the 20 of jacob kerr the eight of tom flitcroft and the 32 of hunter johnson uh so really unfortunate to see a lot of racing left on lap 19 of 80 so plenty left to do but uh a lot of these guys will be coming down pit road i would imagine yeah and the 28 also got involved some pretty hard right damage also got some contact from the 20 on the left side so he will likely be uh looking to uh to uh, use his faster pair up as well after this incident, I, don't, I think everyone else pretty much got away mostly uh, clean there, but Jorge Rincon also involved in that accident here on lap that happened on lap 18. These drivers working lap 19 under yellow uh, here at Daytona International Speedway. I want to see these guys and uh, see what they're going to be able to do here. It's going to be very interesting with that happening. I want to get Jacob Kerr in the booth here. Uh, Jacob, it's Eliza in the booth. How are you? I'm doing bad. I've done better. You know, but... <laughs> Take us through what happened. Uh, what happened with you? Uh, just, just, uh, you know, nothing crazy. Just.
trying to make moves and we just kind of got all checked up there and uh, you know I didn't want to jab on the break in the middle of the big pack and uh, I always got turned um, you know the worst thing ever I didn't really hit anything too hard so uh, I think we should be fine going uh, the rest of the way though Absolutely. Well, hopefully we can keep it clean for you and uh, early in the race, so a lot of racing left, but I wish you a ton of luck and uh, we'll get you back out there. I appreciate it. All right. Take it easy. Yep. Thank you. That was Jacob Kerr in that number 20. You see him there on pit road. A little bit of damage, not too much. Uh, and we also have his teammate uh, hopefully coming in to repair those, get these guys back out and running. In the meantime, we have Enrique, who's going to come out. P1, Andrew Wisdom in second. Thomas Harmon in third. Cole Snyder in fourth. And Joel Conley, who was our leader, he's going to come out uh, fifth there, Jordan. Yeah, probably some, definitely some uh, differences in what happened during that, that pit cycle there. Not 100% sure exactly what we, uh, what all these drivers opted to choose on that stop, but I bet I could go back and look but definitely, definitely some uh, differentiating strategies as uh, we saw the way that run played out. Track position was absolutely everything because uh, nobody really got around to making a move. It looked like it was uh, looked like it was fuel only for the 45. So a handful of drivers decided to take fuel only there. I believe probably Joel Conley and a couple others went with uh, with uh, two tires. So. Rear rack them and stack them, and uh, we'll see if these drivers are comfortable enough to start getting aggressive. Still a lot of time remaining in this race. Uh, just a little over 60 laps. Actually, we're at 60 laps, so uh, just uh, plenty of time for to make things happen. Absolutely. Crimson Dega, thank you so much for the follow. And we have Joel Conley, Mr. Kool-Aid, out in chat, and he's, uh, he's given the emojis, the laughing ones, and he says... I'm terrible at pit stops. I can save fuel back here. So, uh, yeah, you know, we brought that up during uh, the race there. Being out front, you will use more fuel. I mean, I'm sure there was still racing left that you could do, but uh, if the caution did not come out, that would definitely affect his race and when he'd have to go in compared to those that were in draft and not using the fuel as much. So uh, that definitely helped him out with the caution coming out as far as that is concerned. But uh, Joel, I'm sorry, buddy, but I can't help you if you're a terrible pit stopper. <laughs> yeah, I've had those stops. Yeah, it looks like he yeah he slid through his pit stall, but he actually got four tires there while a lot of the drivers around him opted for strategy. So still decent time on pit road, even with that small mistake. And uh, he has a benefit of tires. I don't know what that means at Daytona. Probably nothing, but, you know, it's always nice to have that in the bank, I guess absolutely you're asking about the 223 um he is right here you see him right here sean burke i just love his uh picture there absolutely adorable and i love his car a lot of these paint schemes tonight are just on point as they are every single week but i just love all the different schemes really awesome but uh sean burke is going to be in the top 10 here starting out from our first caution as we head back to green soon yeah, Enrique Quinones opting to take that outside lane there. On this restart, the Nine Avenger Wisdom in that bright, bright lime green, black and blue Columbia car looks great. Uh, he gets a great push from the 68 of Thomas Harmon, and he's looking like he's going to be able to try to take this... Uh, this lead away and he's going to do so so the 45 opting to choose that outside lane get a push a push from his teammate not gonna work out for him he's going to lose that lead and possibly a lot more as these drivers already not taking any time at all to try to force their way into that bottom lane yeah he's gonna need a lot more help than what he's got and he's he's got a lot of help right now on the high side but for a while he was just out alone with the 23 car on the outside so hopefully Hopefully he's not going to lose too much uh, positions with this strategy. Really, really tough out there. The high side is so tough to keep it moving, but uh, they're really trying it, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're trying it because that's where they started and they haven't had the opportunity to get out of it. But yeah, they're, <laughs> I mean, they're pushing for all they're worth, trying to make it work. But uh, just, the outside lane just has nothing in it right now. It obviously doesn't have the amount of time speed as you saw the eight he bailed 
on this outside lane, and that's just going to be the continuing theme here is just no one able to make speed. And I don't think anyone's willing to, to try to be aggressive to make it happen this early point of the race with the with a, as much as on the line this being the final race of our regular season here in PSES. Uh, drivers really, really are taking a... a a, a conservative approach to this event. There's no stages. There's no points awarded in the middle of the race. You can get points for leading a lap, or a point for leading a lap, but other than that, there's really no points on offer until the checkered flag waves. Andrew Wisdom out in the lead at the moment. Thomas Harmon in second. We have Jamie Haynes in third. Joel Conley, who... Uh, we saw him lead quite a few laps at the beginning. He is sitting P4 at the moment with Matt O'Brien, our current points leader. He's going to be in the top five running it and running that out. Take a look at the 84 of Michael Bain. We haven't seen a lot of him recently. I feel like he's uh, he he's able to show up, I think, part-time. But he is out here in that 84 looking really good. We have Edward Shear in that 18 directly behind him. So I'm curious how can he, this guy is going to try to make a move. It's just so tough. You've seen it time and time again where they have and they just fall back so hard. So, uh, man, look at this, Jordan. You can see Cole and his teammates in that, you know, 23 and the 45. These guys are trying to make their way inside. They have fallen all the way back from the front. That's just how tough it is out here. Yeah, there's nothing they can do. I mean, if they if they force them their way down, they're going to cause a crash. Uh, we see the, tw the 33 and the the uh, the 41 out there again in the outside trying to make something happen. Uh, they were a couple of drivers there toward the back there, and they've kind of stayed with this outside lane just trying to make some moves. And honestly, it's, it, they're making a little bit of ground right now at this exact moment, but that I, I just think that's going to stall out. But they have help. They have drivers willing to work with them, but it's going to take a large force of race cars to be able to make some momentum happen on that outside lane and honestly that can happen if we can just get if, if these drivers start mixing it up up front but none of these drivers willing to do that the nine i thought was about to was, really thought the 29 was about to bail out on everybody but he uh, he stayed down the 68 stayed off of him let him back in line but yeah just just nowhere for these guys on the outside to go if you're the in, in the inside you basically need to hold serve at this point until uh, the drivers up in the front decide to get aggressive and right now there's just really nothing to gain by doing so unless you just want to have fun or something <laughs> justin mons in that 41 is leading that outside line and they're trying all they can to hold on to it they're really doing a phenomenal job out there we had atlanta racing in that 44 who was trying to lead it but he decided better uh he, he wanted to tuck down low and decided to do that so that is where he uh is now currently the 41 kind of making moves now on the outside uh side by side with atlanta racing Cole from from our, our fourth place driver of six, the 62 of Joel Conley he bails to pit road here so not really sure why but that was what he opted to do there I guess he just wanted to get out of line maybe or maybe uh, um, was maybe had some high temps or something of that nature not really sure but the 62 of Joel Conley our bull sitter on pit road here I hope he visit us out in chat because I'm very curious about that call um there's got to be a reason. I don't know what it is, but Crimson Dega in chat says Haynes and Conley have a lot of experience running together. And if Adam Rowe gets to them, they worked great together. So uh, hopefully Conley will be able to get back out here. Until then, I'm not sure what they're going to do. <laughs> oh, and, and also another driver that, that has had uh, connection uh, issues and uh, um, Jose Ruiz. It is six laps down currently. He was one of those drivers work, working the back, trying to be conservative. Uh, he uh, disconnected earlier. He has since reconnected to this race, but uh, that car not quite back out on the racetrack. Another driver with some uh, virtual electrical issues tonight. Really unfortunate to see out here, but you can see this entire train moving around the track as we're on lap 29 of 80. Still plenty of racing left, and these guys in the back 
are just really, really trying all that they can do to make their way up there. Let's take a look. I want to see who is leading this high side. It looks like it is going to be Atlanta Racing leading us on the high side. We'll see if he can make these guys gain a few positions and uh, try to make their way up through the field. Yeah, they just need more help. They just need more, more help, and they need those drivers out front towing this this group around to uh, to get slowed down, to get woed up. But yeah, Atlanta Racing doing what he can to try to pull these drivers in that outside lane. That outside lane is really well organized, nose to tail in a pretty nice uh, orderly line. But then they get to the corner, and the 44, kind of a newer driver. We usually see him in the broadcast booth, so not the uh not the most uh, uh, uh confident i don't believe out in that outside lane at the moment a little wiggly there running really high in front of the 41 and i don't think that's really working for that outside lane we see the the 32 of hunter johnson he makes an aggressive move down to the bottom the 44 of atlanta racing he bails on that outside lane and the 10 gives him room there to get back in line that's robert reynolds and that is probably going to be the death of that outside lane as we see hunter johnson he pulls up in between the teammates now to try to help push that 41 one up back up to the front yeah you know and these guys on the low line they are pretty well separated i mean there's a pretty good gap between each and every car which is kind of helping but kind of yet not helping that outside line because they have a lot more space to catch up now on that outside and with the switching positions constantly that is really not helping them and now they have completely broken up and all of them are trying to find a way back to the inside line that way they can regather and try their strategy again but for now uh three of them it's not going to be enough yeah, meanwhile, a couple of drivers uh, uh, getting lapped here. The 62 of Joel Conley, we saw him go to pit road a minute ago. He just got lapped, uh, was able to get back in line. The 19 of Michael Everidge, he is currently getting lapped in that outside lane all by himself. We'll see if he's able to find his way down into the field. He actually bounces it off the wall there almost. Maybe he got the wall for sure there uh, a little bit ago. But, uh, yeah, a couple of drivers and uh, some anchor on the, uh, on the radio to see what might have happened as uh, there's some there's some pretty heavy damage on the front of the 33 car of Jason Keffer so gonna need to go back and look and see how he acquired that uh, a, a couple of laps ago Ooh, big checkup that's what happened yeah the double zero is just all over his back bumper trying to push him but I'm curious if that front damage is affecting his car they, they might need to pass him up and pull him along uh, I'm not sure if that's going to affect him too much where they're just going to keep falling back with all that damage out front. Uh, they're going to try to pass him on the outside. That is Cole Snyder. He is just completely alone at the moment as everyone's trying to pass him on the outside. Yeah, they're, they're, these guys are, are starting to race hard. And, and like you mentioned, that, that damage on the front of the 33, he's going to be really good. He's going to be fine. Not really good, but he'll be okay. He'll be fine. He'll be passable as long as he remains in the pack and is able to stay with that draft and can get that toe. But if he is leading anything, that car is going to become an absolute uh, uh, parachute. And there he goes. He tries to pop out of line to pass the 28 machine here as these drivers continue to lose this front pack. Uh, still close enough to get in there. Oh, the, the 19 just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> the down there in the bottom lane, but uh, some a little bit of drama at the back of the pack, but so far none toward the front. Andrew Wisdom still leading the race. I mean, these guys are very well happy at the moment. Going single file line, not pushing the issue. He's got uh, Thomas Harmon directly behind him. He's even leaving a gap. He's like, I I'm not pushing it. I don't want to be on your bumper and perhaps turn you, get myself damaged. I'm not having it right now. So he's just going to hang back. The 53 of Jamie Haynes, he's leaving a gap. All of these guys are. So these guys are pretty well spaced out where right now they're just logging the laps they're waiting for the final uh laps where they are going to race hard it is all or nothing here tonight this is it guys the final race of the regular season so next week we will head to the lady in black at darlington so it's going to be a wild race much different than what we see here tonight yeah and just uh to, to follow up on uh, a couple of situations. Jose Ruiz has come and rejoined the race seven laps down and 
behind him and unable to, to keep up with him. We we talked to Jacob Kerr. Uh, he he felt like the damage was manageable to to not have to use that that fast repair. Well, he has lost the draft and is not able to hold on to that 30 car. So that machine is wounded. He's going to need a yellow as he is the last car on the lead lap, 36.6 seconds back, or, or even further than that by this point, uh, and uh, well behind anyone that he can draft with so that car needing a change of, of fate here before too long very frustrating night for him tonight as you know how it is if you're on a super speedway and you are by yourself that is not a fun race to have by yourself you want to be out there in the action you don't want to lose the draft because as these guys are going so much faster than you you are just losing seconds uh quickly so he desperately needs a caution right now something to come out where uh, he can repair that damage and get back with everyone yeah like you said that is that is driving around this place i i'm someone that enjoys making hot laps and just making laps at random places at racetracks this is not a fun <laughs> this place at talladega i racing super speedway that is no fun to be by yourself at uh it's, it's arguable it's not fun to be uh, around a bunch of people at but that's another discussion for another day uh, uh but just uh it's 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 no fun and then you top on that the car is wounded you're slower you you don't really you know you're gonna have to fight every time the pack gets to you as they are going as by are the wounded 20 <laughs> machine right now uh it, he's gonna have to fight to be able to hold on to that 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 line and honestly i don't think he has the pace to be able to do it with that car as wounded as it is so it's just a it's like you said it's just incredibly frustrating and it's defeating and it's more most importantly it's boring to just log laps at daytona a little bit you love daytona you love the excitement of it but if you're by yourself it's more of a sad face right there just a sad yeah, face. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you look at everyone else kind of drafting with each other and, and having fun and going real fast and, yeah. and putting good lap times on the board. And yeah, and you they go by. wish you were part of them. They go by <laughs> and, and, and lot, most of them don't even wave. They don't have the courtesy to, to, to say, hey, how you doing? as they go it's yeah it's frustrating a much different race you're you're over here you're relaxed wishing you're with everyone and meantime these guys in this line i guarantee you it's completely different uh we have the 68 who is now on the bumper of the nine car he is very tense he's looking around him he's looking behind him in front of him making sure that he is dead even locked on to andrew wisdom in that nine car you have to be exact these cars can spin very easily so if he if, if he is not perfectly on that bumper he will turn him yeah if you're when you're by yourself, you, you hate your car and you hate your life. And whenever you're in one of these lines, you hate everyone around you because they're either pushing you way harder than you want them to or, or the person in front of you is checking up way more than you want them to. So it's just it's just tough. This this place is... this These are the parts of the race that are really difficult uh, just because it's, it's, it's incredibly tough to be patient and it's incredibly tough to just... And I, I, I heard a voice over the radio, and I was looking, and even with as as single file as it's been, the aid of Thomas Flitcroft has kind of slowly but surely worked his way through the pack. So making ground up a positive on this race, they're going around the 30 of Jose Ruiz to put him another lap down, and he will now be eight laps down after that electrical issue. That car should be in good shape, though, so... I have a feeling if, if these races get like we've seen on big tracks toward the end, uh, he has a shot to make those up if more drivers don't fall that down. Yeah, I'm on board with the number eight. We have the 223 of Sean Burke directly in front of him. I'm showing him some love for HSU goes in. He says, spectate 233. He's my boss and told me I'd get a raise if I spectate him. <laughs> we'll go get that raise, all right? <laughs> Goose, what's up? How are you? Hope you're doing well. Stratus, how are you? Thank you so much. Um, I'm not 100%. I'm trying to get there. So uh, I'm just glad to be here tonight. Glad you all could join us. I really appreciate it. It's been a while. I, it's been since last Thursday. This was the last thing I uh, broadcasted was PSES last week, and I believe it was Michigan. So excited to be back here. These guys are calm now. 
very very wild to see we've only had one caution so far uh we'll see what happens but you know the madness has yet to start it's just a matter of time hopefully it doesn't get too crazy I, you know i'm i'm good for you know let some of the guys use one of their fast repairs let's have a big one but then let's race it out and see three three four wide finish i'm down for that <laughs> Andrew Wisdom still out front. Uh, very comfortable. Nobody is challenging him for that lead. Thomas Harmon sitting very comfortably in uh, second place. Jamie Haynes in third. We have Matt O'Brien in fourth. Michael Bain in that 84. He's going to round out the top five. We have Edward Shear. He's in that uh, number 18 in P6 with Sean Burke in the 223. He's going to be in P7. Thomas Flitcroft in eighth. Uh, like as Jordan said, he has made his way up through the field, doing a great job out there. Adam Rowe in the 15. He's going to be P9. And Charlie Mosley Jr. Uh, he's going to round out your top 10 there, Jordan. Oh, meanwhile, behind them, Atlanta Racing in, uh, I believe this is the second cup race he has done with the PSES guys, uh, having a solid race right now, 11th in the running order. Justin Mons in 12th, one of the drivers trying to work his way through the field. And honestly, uh, he had fallen all the way back, and he is trying to work his way forward and then he's managed to work his way up. Well, the 10 of Robert Reynolds in 13th. The 88 of Doc Holliday in 14th. The 32 of Hunter Johnson, another oh. driver we've seen move around. And, oh, there's a big wreck in the back. He saved it. How did he save that race car? What in the bananas? The 50 car goes all the way to the inside wall, saves it, comes back and has a gaggle of cars make it uh, right past him. It does not affect anyone, but he will lose the draft. Tough night for FTR here tonight yeah. there, Jordan. Yeah, I think he I think he just got the wall on his own. I think he was trying to to draft up yeah he was trying to draft up to the 88 then swing up high to get behind the 32 and help push him and he just misjudged it and got the wall and made a nice save after that but uh just tried to make an aggressive move off the corner and just the, the car and the track did not have the grip that he needed to be able to pull that off great save though i'll tell you what man I'm sure that scared a few people around him but uh the race is still green lap 46 <laughs> I bet it did. Probably woke him up a little bit. <laughs> I think some of these drivers could use it. <laughs> Andrew Wisdom still out in the lead. Thomas Harmon, I'm telling you, these guys very comfortable out here. Single file line. This package is just so challenging to make it too wide. Uh, you've seen people try it time and time again. They all have fallen back. Uh, not only do you need to be on top of each other on the high side, you need a huge group. And with that low line being uh, pretty well separated, it's really challenging to try to make up any spots and then try to find your way to the inside line and keep those spots that you gained. Uh, we haven't been able to see that work here so far tonight. Ride with the rabbit. He says, just checking this out for my possible defection. <laughs> rabbit, what's up? Too many green flag laps. Honeycut started nodding off. Mick, uh, MK Gaming says, you know, sometimes you get very comfortable, a little too comfortable. And yeah, you, you can hit the wall, do some silly things. I'm not sure if that was the case. A lot of but our drivers hit pit road here. Take a look at this. Lap 47 of 80, uh, Pit Road very, very busy, a very clean entry to Pit Road as we are out here on Pit Lane. Jamie Haynes will take over the lead in that number 53 car. We have the 84 car in second. Adam Rowe stays out. Charlie Mosley Jr., Justin Mons, and Doc Holliday. Uh, only about six. Everyone else, Jordan, has seemed to go into Pit Road. Yeah, and it looks like a lot of them taking four tires here, which I didn't fully expect, but that's what they're going for. The eight, I believe, might have taken 
two tires there to try to shorten that pit stop up a little bit as he's able to get up right behind the nine. Uh, also, the 68 of, of Thomas Harmon had a great pit road entry. I uh, don't think he was speeding there because he's, uh, he's he's hanging on in front of the nine, but but uh, Thomas Flitcroft able to make up a few spots on pit road in the 68, able to leapfrog the nine. We'll see how aggressive they are with each other coming off as the nine pulls to his outside to try to complete this pass. How aggressive will the 68 be trying to side draft as they're trying to get up to speed? Not incredibly aggressive. Now he'll follow him up a little bit and the nine not able to complete that pass. So this is currently the battle for the provisional lead as we still have green flag pit stops going on as uh, they continue on. Yeah, Michael Bain currently in the lead, but he is El Solo. Uh, man. Not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal at all. I, you know, if you're going in, you want to make sure that you're with several people. You do not want to go in by yourself because if you're coming out, that means you're by yourself. So you got to have that group with you to try to draft with. Hopefully, he will be able to catch them once he comes off a of pit road. But uh, scary sight if I'm him right now. Yeah, and you, you want to come in. You want to have that draft that on, on your in laps, but but. Another, an underrated part of coming in with a big group of people at one of these play tracks is you have drivers to gauge your pit road entry. You can be kind of conservative to start off and then and then kind of maybe ratchet up the aggressiveness to just kind of make sure that you get a few positions. Uh, obviously, you need to be smart and not, you know, speed once you get to the line, but you have that gauge to, to figure out... Uh, how to you know how to how to make that move and whatnot uh when you're by yourself uh, you don't know if maybe you're being a little too conservative if you if you're trying real hard to make sure you push it as far as you can to that line then that's what can force you to make a mistake so as uh, as counterintuitive as it might sound there is um there is some bene a big benefit to uh, to trying to to work that hornet's nest that's coming to pit road you know, we called it earlier when green flag stops come, things really start to separate. And we have three guys out here uh, in a pack right now. They have two behind them that are trying to catch them. That is going to be, I do believe, Matt O'Brien and Edward Shear. So these guys are the ones uh, that are together trying to catch Thomas Harmon Thomas Flitcroft and Andrew Wisdom. These guys, if they can continue to work well together and keep these guys out of the draft, they will be able to stay away, but uh, they're going to have to really work hard together. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas, and Wisdom sounds like a, <laughs> a, a law firm up there right? that's in the top three, but that is who currently makes up our top three. Right behind them, Matthew O'Brien and Edward Schur. And uh, then behind them is... Uh, is uh, the 53 of, uh, or no, that's the 19, actually, I believe, of uh, of Jake Rowe, or Michael Everidge. Yeah, that's the 19 of Michael Everidge, who is currently a lap down. And then there is a long line of cars, about 11, about 10, 11 strong, trying to catch these guys, which I imagine they will be able to at one point. Uh, this will be one big group before too long. But right now, these front three doing a great job, and they're pulling away. They're definitely pulling away from those two drivers behind them, and uh, they're continuing on. Yeah, Tom Flitcroft all over the back bumper of Andrew Wisdom. So he's just doing a phenomenal job. You can see him kind of drifting up the track, which can be a little scary because, like I said, you have to be dead center on that back bumper. Otherwise, you will upset the car and he will wreck, and that will pretty much ruin everything that you've accomplished so far. But they are most definitely pulling away. Meanwhile, you see Thomas Harmon in that 68 directly behind Flitcroft. <laughs> <laughs> he is staying very close, which is helping in that draft, giving the momentum that they need to keep gaining and put that gap behind him. But man, you can see Flitcroft get a little loose as he is behind the nine car, trying to keep it even, trying to keep the momentum up. But it's definitely a challenge. Yeah, I think he's just trying to keep the engine cool more than anything. He's trying to use maybe the bubble to push the nine as much as physically pushing. So I think that might be his strategy there. He's definitely looking a little unstable working the line. Definitely not as smooth as the nine or the, the 68 behind him. 
but still I think yeah I think his goal here moving up a little high maybe to, to, to try to get a little bit of air on that front nose to make sure he's overheating because they are pushing really aggressively right now to try to hold off that big pack I don't, I don't that's not gonna happen for him uh, he's able to actually give the nine a really good push going off into turn one there and, uh, and that allowed him to get away oh the nine gets the apron just a little bit coming off of uh, turn two so that kind of killed their momentum but uh, one thing that's easy here that I've that I've kind of noticed in a couple of races I've done here is through the tri-oval if you're wrapping that yellow line it can be very uh, deceptive and it's very easy to, to to grab it and when it once it grabs you it keeps on grabbing you it's not it doesn't really spin you but it it just kind of hooks you a little bit and it's kind of difficult to get off of it and it's scrubbing off speed while you're doing it yeah i feel like it's like a wake out there where uh you're just riding it like a surfboard you're back and forth and trying to keep it from wrecking so it, it takes you a second to keep get it off of the apron and try to get back on meanwhile uh matt o'brien and edward Shear they have that huge group behind them that has now caught them the three up ahead they have put quite a gap yeah, but these guys are going to have to come together and uh, kind of get back together again as they caught the two, and that's going to kind of bunch them up. And uh, <laughs> they are pushing aggressively. They are right so now. aggressive. And very, a very curious decision. I was wondering if maybe the 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 65 or that that group there, not the 65, the yeah the 60, uh, whatever car number that is, uh, they're in the the old Pepsi machine. I, or the 53 goodness gracious i i don't know my numbers I, yeah i don't know my dead gum numbers for some reason but yeah uh, okay. the leader of that front pack i, I was kind of a little bit surprised they didn't opt to try to make the pass there but uh they're trying to make up as much time as they can a uh, little dicey there at the front whenever you catch a couple of guys who are running a little slower than you to try to get them up to speed and get the rest of that big line in order where they don't accordion together and cause a big wreck. But a nice job of, of getting this organized. And now this front group, honestly, with the numbers they have, they shouldn't have to be too aggressive working on each other to be able to run down these front three. They should have a really, really, really good, uh, have some really good lap times these next few laps they're going to go around to this nine machine and put him a lap down that is douglas king going one down yeah we're on board with matt o'brien who is leading this pack right now and uh you can just see the banking as we are going around the corner and hsu no, goes in uh says so i know nothing about nascar how do you gain time in turns i'm assuming you just want to keep low and i assume you want to draft off the vehicle in front of you what other ways do you increase speed uh, for this is pretty much yeah you want to draft off each other the guy behind Matt O'Brien he definitely wants to push him he's got to keep that momentum the speed but he's got to watch his engine temperature it's not an easy thing to do by any means uh, the guys behind him though they want to kind of leave a gap just enough that they uh, keep a little bit of separation so that he's not upsetting the car in front of him you never want to push the pusher so these guys just have to work together stay close enough that they can use the draft and that will get these cars flying uh i what do you say jordan 10 what 10 or so more mile per hour than if they were by themselves 15 or so uh, uh yeah it's a lot yeah, there's it definitely a, lot. a huge difference they're going they're getting right at about uh following the matthew o'brien he's about 197 198 before they got into the corner and uh not sure if there's a driver currently out there riding by himself i don't think there is but if i could find one i could give you a good uh let's see the the 28 he looks to he appears to be mostly by him so no he's got one driver behind him but yeah it's a massive massive difference uh at this place at daytona in the draft and Howard. and yes you need help to to put lap time down here at this particular racetrack now shorter race shorter tracks uh heck even you know two mile tracks uh it's it's not different than you know any any other type of racing really it's it's different in the in the skill set and whatnot but it's basically hit your marks and and take care of your stuff and 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 you know get into the corner well easy in and hard out and and try to at a lot of bigger tracks you're still trying to work the draft but mostly it's it's uh it's you know some it's not that completely different than other racing it just looks a lot different and and takes a little bit different uh uh skill set to to pull it off 
I, I'm taking a look at the speed of our three guys up front compared to the entire pack behind them. And you can just see the times are melting away. Uh, they are about six mile per hour faster than our top three right here. Uh, when I first brought this up, we, we were about 2.64 behind. Now we're just a little over two seconds, so they are most definitely catching them. You have, uh, you have the advantage of not only the numbers, but these guys are really working very well together. You can see them uh, pretty equally spaced. The 18 is not so much on the 17's bumper anymore, but he is still giving him the draft that he needs, and we're under two seconds at this point so these guys are definitely catching him now the question is what are they going to do when they catch him are they going to take it to the high side uh that's that's what i would be doing i'd be taking it to the high side i'm not falling in line here yeah i don't know if these drivers are going to fall in line i would imagine not but uh, we'll find out the aid of, of tom flickcroft really falling off of, of these two uh maybe running a little hot riding behind the nine and just trying to get that engine cooled down just a little bit and uh that can that can permanently hurt your car if you're if if you're not careful if you don't take it easy and and, and you aren't mindful of that but that has allowed the 17 to get a sniff of his draft and like you said will they go to the outside or will they be willing to ride and yep matthew o'brien he goes to the outside now will the rest of these drivers follow suit uh top three able to actually put a pretty sizable gap on the rest of them and we see uh, hunter johnson in the middle of that pack he pulls out to try to claim a space in that outside lane and we might actually see some side-by-side -side racing for the lead here on lap 62 as oh no the 17 he hangs edward shearer out to dry wow that is big unfortunate he just dives it down low directly in front of who is that i want to take a look is that justin monzi <laughs> that was a close call but these guys are now single file line they made up a few spots caught the front pack but man oh man very very tight racing tom flitcroft you know he had to be overheating there once you hit like i would say around 270 you really want to back that down you don't want to go any higher than that i believe at 280 it starts flashing at you just absolutely screaming and boiling so he's definitely got to cool that down and hopefully uh it's cool enough for him at this point yeah the third car in line or the fourth car in line i should say is the 62 the car that i couldn't identify earlier because i was looking through my running order and didn't see it up there that is the 62 of joel conley who is currently one lap down in the 25th position he is four right uh, he's fourth in this line at the moment uh, here and over the radio the the 20 of Jacob Kerr's coming into pit road so not the night he was looking for he's currently one lap down and uh, gonna lose another here on this pit stop but right now about six 16 and a half laps to go it'll definitely it'll be right at 16 the next time they cross the line as uh, these laps are winding down they're uh they're ticking away pretty quickly here at Daytona. I know, 17 to go, and this entire front group is made up of 12 cars. We have, uh, let's take a look, Atlanta Racing. He is going to round out the end of this insane train. And uh, HSU says, so... That was a sweet rhyme. <laughs> so more lined up cars increases aerodynamics, which increases speed. Pretty much, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed yep. it. So, Gale Four says, oh, "Okay, you're answering." But yes, uh, you got to be close together. You got to keep that momentum up, the aerodynamics flowing, and you will go. I want to go fast. You're, you're going fast now. You made it. <laughs> yeah, the the harder those cars at the front are pushing, the faster the entire line is going to go. But uh, the harder they're pushing, the more dangerous that gets. So it's there's that line that you got to walk whenever uh, you're in in these portions of the race where you just can't really make a move without help. Uh, so you got to pick and choose when to be aggressive. And here, with 15 laps to go, these drivers not quite deciding to get aggressive yet. We're getting there. We're getting close. 
We are getting close with 15 to go. We're on board with Justin Mons in that 41. He is leaving that gap. You guys see it all night. These guys have been so patient all night. I'm actually very impressed, Jordan. I thought we were going to see a lot more cautions than this. And let me, let me knock on wood because you know what can happen. Uh, it is definitely not over. Anything can happen. But uh, for right now, these guys are just so patient with each other, giving each other room. I assume some communication going on. Uh, but these guys are doing a great job. Yeah, definitely not the race that I was envisioning in my mind, but definitely one it's it's definitely one you could expect, but it's not the one that that I I was definitely I was absolutely expecting if that made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> like it's one of those where it's like, yeah, you could definitely see them, you know, riding it out, trying to save track position, make up all their ground in the pit cycles and and try to work through the field that way. Uh when, but I think we were thinking we were going to see drivers being incredibly aggressive, trying to get to the front and maintaining that position. Uh, instead, we've seen a lot of conservative driving tonight. And for some lucky driver out there, that's going to work out for them uh, once the checkered flag flies. But we are still currently a long way away from that 13 laps to go here at the line. Yeah, take a look at this. We have Enrique Quinones. He is leading this pack out here, and that is for P13. And I feel like they are very, very far away. I'm trying to get a, a look at how exactly far back these guys are, but uh, they are about almost 12 seconds back. So pretty incredible with uh, the separation between 12 and 13th out here. It is, it's quite large and uh, a couple of these guys Michael York included in that number five car he was the one who stated earlier that uh, he wanted to stay out back and he's like I'll see you guys in the final five laps time is running out though I don't know if these guys are going to be able to catch up 12 seconds within 12 laps I mean that that's pretty well impossible at this point they're gonna need a caution Jordan Yeah, if you're not in this main pack, you 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 don't have a shot. Uh, I'd, I'd argue if you're not the way this race is looking, if you're not in the top five, it's in, you're not gonna have a great shot uh, at it. But we'll 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 see how this how this is gonna uh, play out. But yeah, only 12 drivers. There's there's 13 in this main pack. 12 of them on the lead lap, and uh, yeah, the the winner of this event is definitely going to come from that group. Absolutely. Anything can unless change, we get though. A caution. Unless we get a caution, because <laughs> anything can unless, happen. Unless they all wipe out. Unless, like, we, we talked to, uh, to Joel Conley before the race, and like, unless he uh, he puts it on the roof. So, you know, <laughs> anything's possible. Oh, my goodness. Goes in, says, so when do people start getting aggressive? Uh, right now, it, I know 15 doesn't seem a lot. We're at 11 right now, but there is still a ton of racing left. This is a big track. It's a super speedway. You don't want to get too aggressive just yet. I am saying uh, if it's me, I'm doing it on lap three. I want to do it with enough time to see if it works or not, but I don't want to do it too late where I can't do it. But uh, it's difficult. You really have to time it well because you don't want to do it early enough, like lap seven or so, where you, you have a chance to let everyone pass you back. So it's all about timing. It takes a lot of practice, and they're going to need a lot of help, especially if they're trying to pass on this outside. It's just tough tonight. Andrew Wisdom is sitting in a great spot, uh, but uh, he's going to be at one point, what I'm going to call a sitting duck. Because you're going to be out in the front, and everyone's going to try to go around you. And the thing is, a lot of these drivers aren't going to have a lot of a lot of practice of trying to be aggressive here. I mean, a lot of these guys have been doing these types of races for a long time here on the service. Uh, a lot of them have been doing, you know, plate racing, or not? It's not plate racing anymore, but super speedway racing at these kind of tracks. So, you know, they're they're not going to be, you know, completely out in the left field once the intensity ratchets up. But for the most part, uh, a lot of these drivers haven't worked on on passing a car. A lot of them have been spent pretty much the whole race riding around. So, will they be prepared? Will they be able to make the moves they need to make uh, once that time comes? Uh, which it it's it's getting close if you're if you're up toward the front you want to wait as long as you can but if you're one of these drivers toward the middle of the pack and and, and right now you can see them 
all starting to spread out. They're 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 getting ready to make that move. They're they're definitely trying to. It's it's like an accordion. They're spreading out, and eventually they're all gonna you know hit the throttle. They're gonna gas it down. They're gonna try to make that move, and this thing's gonna accordion up, and that's when the action is gonna happen. But uh, with the laps ticking down, they're gonna need to start getting a move on here to make this move. Yeah, that's the thing. For those guys who are newer to super speedway racing, once you do want to make a move, you got to drop back as these guys are doing. Uh, make sure that you still have the draft. That's very important. You don't want to lose that draft, but you want to get that run and just absolutely floor it. Make sure you have guys directly on you so that when you come up to their bumper, you just fly out. They all go with you. Hopefully you guys survive it <laughs> and you just draft all the way up to the front and make your move but it is definitely a challenge something that they're going to have to try a few times before they can get it right and as jordan said they haven't had a lot of time to practice this and i think i think some of these drivers a lot of these drivers not really in this group but in the, that second group are are starting to make pit stops and, and i i think there's one more pit cycle to make here right before this race ends i think that might be why we've seen all these drivers kind of kind of lag behind they might be trying to save the fuel uh to, to see if they can maybe make it to the end but i think pit stops might play into uh, you know might have an effect here maybe those are drivers that didn't get it all fuel trying to have a quick pit stop that la that last time around but with some of these drivers opting to hit pit road that kind of worries me a little bit to see if some of these drivers maybe can't make it maybe all of them can as we see the 17 he oh all these guys are heading to pit road yeah take a look at this everyone just going together wow oh. very very close entry for a couple of very those guys smooth. back there man uh great job on there and making it happen uh man you can't get any better that these guys all did a phenomenal job. Jamie Haynes will go out to the lead. Adam Rowe in second. Bud Shear in third. And just a gaggle of cars from 4th through 12th, all on pit road. And we have a wreck. Jacob Kerr involved, the 93. Adam Rowe, Bud Shear, Jacob Kerr. Let's take a look at what happened here. What in the world happened there? No yellow flag yet. Oh, the 93 caught the 15, the 20 involved. Very, very unfortunate to oh, there see. It is. And uh, that will bring out the caution. And of course, you know what I'm going to say next, Jordan. This changes everything. That does change everything. I mean, that was going to be who could get the, the quickest, you know, splash of gas here. This is going to bunch the entire field up. There are still a lot of drivers on pit road. Uh, a, a late yellow call that one was thrown by the admins but obviously there was a massive wreck on the back straight so it's it's hard to say that was not justified but uh again this absolutely changes everything and if you weren't on pit road if you didn't make your pit stop that is absolutely going to hurt you because this track is so big and these drivers were making quick enough pit stops they were not going to go a lap down and uh, it, i mean everyone pitting obviously everyone's going to need fuel here so if you did not make that pit stop uh, yet you are at a huge disadvantage here and with as many drivers still remain on the lead lap uh, that's that's gonna really hurt your race we're gonna get andrew wisdom in here it's eliza in the booth how you doing i am hanging in there i'm extremely stressed out right now <laughs> i would imagine five laps to go the caution comes out man oh man uh just this changes everything what's your strategy as you move forward uh, yeah, we're just going to have to try to get to the front here, uh, quite frankly. We took a flash of gas there, just enough to try to get us to the end. So uh, we're going to see what happens here. Hopefully we don't go into a bunch of overtimes. Absolutely. Um, well, I... Yeah, we're, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. This is where things get crazy. So uh, I hope the splash of gas gets you home. And uh, hopefully in the winter circle, we'll see what happens here. But uh, a lot of luck moving forward. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, you heard it there from Andrew Wisdom. Really hoping for that win tonight. You see him moving through. Uh, man, it's going to get crazy, Jordan. Very crazy. Yeah, this is... Uh, we were on track for a nice green flag finish there, but yeah, a couple <laughs> of, uh, of cars <laughs> yeah. wreck coming together there uh, completely changes the race. And, and yeah, there's no way this is not going to be a very aggressive start. Uh, yeah, this is going to be wild. And, uh, you know, just to say, first and second, they are uh, 
They are in the points battle for the lead, separated by only one point. Absolutely insane. So Andrew Wisdom, Matt O'Brien. You have Thomas Flitcroft in a third. It's going to be extremely close. Rock NASCAR says it's going to get intense now, folks. You said it there. You said it. Spring Rock says you just gave him the booth curse. Uh, yeah, definitely restacks the field. In, in fairness, we 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 interviewed him <laughs> after the thing that took him out of the lead happened, so we kind of reverse cursed it. I think. I think that I think might so. that might cancel it out. I think so. Uh, Probably man. not. No, nah, he'll he'll be flipping down the back straight. Okay. I'm a little confused here because it's showing Andrew Wisdom, Matt O'Brien, and Thomas Flitcroft. First, second, and third, but man, it's just crazy. Look at all the guys in front of them. A lot a lot of drivers pit there, I think, uh, when the pits were closed. So, I'm not sure what the, uh, the penalty is going to be for that, but yeah, I think the 53 of Jamie Haynes, a couple of other drivers got to pit road when it was closed so they are going to fall back here toward the back of the pack tough tough call for those guys as uh definitely we're not expecting the caution to come out there but uh incident involving a few guys that just collected together off the of pit road it happens and here we are oh man it's just it's gonna be insane so we have matt o'brien he's gonna lead us off we have andrew wisdom in second thomas Harmon in third tom flitcroft uh in fourth we're gonna have hunter johnson robert reynolds edward Shear, justin mons adam rowe uh very very close together this, this is anyone's race now guys three laps to go it's gonna get crazy let me know in chat who, who you think's gonna win kool says we're gonna crash now i i would like to say you're not but <laughs> kool -Aid, i i can see it coming i can see it brewing up a lot of aggression a lot of guys trying to make some moves uh i, I don't put it past that we have another caution here yeah, this is gonna get wild, especially th these guys toward the front. I could I could see figuring it out a little bit, but in the middle of the pack, it's gonna get really, really, really crazy and uh, really aggressive. And they're going green, and I am holding my breath. They are going green at Daytona International Speedway. Two laps to go. You guys, this is going to be insane. Andrew Wisdom, he goes down low, brings it up high. Matt O'Brien directly behind him. Tom Flitcroft going to be P3. We have the 68 falling in directly behind. These guys trying to make moves, getting stacked up. The 17 getting a little loose, going all over the 8 car on the high side. Tom Flitcroft completely by himself. Teammate 32, Hunter Johnson passes him up. He's got no help on that outside. They're taking it three wide, Jordan. Yeah, Tom made the move, got hung out to dry. He's able to get back in line. Meanwhile, the 41, we've seen him trying to make moves all race long. He is up into the fifth spot on that outside lane. The front four has gotten a little bit of a gap on the rest of the field, but it's closing as they take the white flag here at Daytona. One lap to go. Andrew Wisdom leading the way. Hunter Johnson, he pops out to the outside. He has a run. Now the three, there's three of them up there in that high line. Three on the high line. We have the 68, the 32, and the eight of Tom Flitcroft. Can they make it happen as we are headed to the backstretch? They have a lead out. Now will Hunter take it to the bottom and leave him out to dry? What is going to happen? He's got a teammate out there, Jordan. These guys are going under the yellow. We are now three wide in the track. There is going to be some action happening. Hunter Johnson, he's going to try to make something happen here. He's going to bring it down low. He brings down his teammates. He brings down the 68. Will he be able to keep it? It's going to be so, so close. Too wide for the finish here. The 68 of Thomas Harmon takes the win here at Daytona International Speedway. And you see a collection of cars, Jordan. Yeah, that was a, a wild finish. A lot to go over there at the end of that one. Hunter <laughs> Johnson able to get to the lead, not able to hold off the move. The 68 pulled out very... <laughs> Uh, pulled out at the very perfect moment right as he got out of the corner swings it to the outside the 32 not able to defend it tried to 
tried to hold him up as high as he could, not able to, to, to side draft him back, and just a great, great race to the line between those two. And then afterward, a lot of guys, uh, uh, big wrecking, uh, but after the line, doesn't matter. But still, a lot of fun. Absolutely insane. Let's get Thomas Harmon in here as uh, I'm sure he's getting ready to celebrate. Absolutely incredible job for him. We'll get Hunter Johnson in here. Get all these guys in, but man, look at that celebration. What a crazy ending for these guys. Absolutely incredible. Justin Mons takes a third. Man, <laughs> that finish is one that we're going to have to rewatch a few times. You see Thomas Harmon celebrating there. Thomas, it's Eliza in the booth. How are you tonight? Oh, pretty good now. I bet you are. What a finish out there. We saw you up front quite a bit tonight, being very patient. Uh, obviously, strategy working out well for you. Take us through those last couple of laps and uh, how you made that move for the win here. Uh, purely chaos is the best way to explain it. Um, I, I figured Hunter was going to go at some point and being the fourth car in line my best bet was to go with him and sure enough he pulled uh i think it was matthew or or right now i don't remember who it was off of andrew and allowed us to get a run and then i just knew i had to be patient and pick my spot when i made the move for the win uh you did an incredible job here tonight uh great seeing you out there in the 68 and it's a frozen car so i'm i'm loving it too so <laughs> great job congratulations on the win uh great move and man that was so close we've watched the replay a couple of times out here i want to take a look and watch it again but absolutely so close we're watching it here on the camera uh side by side side drafting it but he just made it work and passed him directly at the line so once again great job and uh is there anyone you want to give a shout out to you uh, yeah, shout out to you. Yeah, you guys up in the booth for broadcasting it to everybody. Uh, all the fans that show, that watch every week, all the drivers that show up. Uh, frozen on side of the car, and shout out to my youngest daughter because she's the reason I ran this paint tonight. Oh, that's so adorable. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations, and uh, give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will. All right, Jordan, over to you. Yeah, here with uh, uh, Hunter Johnson came home in second place tonight. Saw so you trying to generate moves pretty much the entire race. Uh, how frustrating was it uh, being stuck out there when the single file racing and then just talk us through that crazy restart at the end and uh, the run to the finish and, and just how things needed to work differently for you to come home the winner tonight. Uh, it was pretty exciting uh, throughout the whole race. Uh, making Trying to make moves was not really a good idea for most of the race. Uh I made some attempts, got shot down, made some more attempts, got shot down, just didn't have the help or really the push power or anything to be able to make those runs happen. Uh, the last restart, though, it was very, very exciting. Uh, I knew it was going to be close if we had another caution on fuel, so I was worried about that. But started behind a teammate on the restart, gave him a nice shove. I was telling him to shove as hard as we can. He pulled out a little bit earlier than I wanted to, so I didn't. I decided it was in my best interest to not go with him. Then got Thomas behind me, and I was knew he was going to stick with me if I was able to get side by side with Matthew. Once I did, pulled Matthew, separated them, and then he just gave me a nice good shove all the way down the back stretch. And coming off of four, I felt like I had a good shot at it. I could have blocked him if I wanted to, but I didn't want to tear up two nice looking race cars, so I decided to settle for P2. Well, P2, not settling, not not that, a pretty good settle, I should say, uh, tonight here at Daytona. Hunter Johnson coming home second place, barely by 28 thousandths of a second. Absolutely. Photo finish there. Really incredible job. And we have Justin Mons in the booth rounding out the top three. Having a great job, a great run tonight. We saw you make some incredible moves on the outside, trying to make it work on the outside. But uh, how hard was it out there to try to get anything done? It was difficult. Uh, these guys just wanted to sit on the bottom and ride for the whole way through. And I was like, OK, there's a time and place for that. But you know, when we're a third of the way through the race and no one's wanting to make a move, you know, it's time that we start stirring the pot a little bit. So I kept 
you know, trying to campaign for some uh, movement on the outside. And Hunter would go with me. We would make a little headway and then just fall right back because we had no, not enough cars. So just had to hold on the bottom in line with everyone else uh, to keep up with them. And uh, because of all the shuffling I did, I lost my teammate together and got caught up in some messes where he was at. So unfortunate for him. But uh, it was it was hectic. Uh, I did not like riding in, in line the entire way. But like I said, it was fine the first third, but it was time to time to get moving. We saw you three wide as you were coming around the corner for the win here. So or for uh, P3 here. So how did you make that happen? What was your decision and uh, how'd you go for it then? That run was completely generated by Eddie Scherer giving me a push <laughs> off the of two. Um, and I was doing some hand jiving all down the backstretch, cutting and moving through some things. I almost turned myself in the middle, uh, right beside uh, Matt O'Brien. Uh, thank God everybody held their line because, I mean, there was just barely enough room. I, I put it right where there was only a car length. And uh, that's where that all came from. So huge thanks to Cher for giving me that push, the 18 car. Uh, that's where it all came from. He, he texted me as we were coming to the green and said, let's go. And I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Well, you did an amazing job. Uh, team effort out there. You know, as much as this, as racing is uh, a single driver effort, Super Speedway is very much a team effort. You have to have drivers that you can work with. And you guys made it happen tonight. And uh, you made it in the top three. And we have Thomas Harmon with the win. So a huge congratulations to you three tonight. What a finish. Definitely a finish to go back and watch. Absolutely phenomenal job out here. But next week... That brings us to next week. We are in the playoffs, you guys. The top 16 move on in points. So we'll have to verify this. I'm sure we'll put it out on Twitter and let you guys know what is going on for the top 16. But these guys will be headed to the Lady in Black next week. It's going to be a wild ride. And I hope you tune in at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time next Thursday. Until then, you guys take it easy. And Jordan, it's always a blast with you. Yeah, that was a that was a, a an interesting night to, to to watch the the wheels turning and these guys uh, uh, basically using the pit cycles there for most of the race to, to make up a lot of ground as uh, as really really conservative driving out of the field tonight and that was pretty well noted over the course of the race. But there at the end we got that we got that late yellow that we always kind of expect to see and uh, from there it was on and and a wild finish that was uh, that was really enjoyable to watch from up here. Absolutely. Well, you guys take it easy and we will see you next week. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. And Andres, thank you so much for the follow. You guys take it easy.